Alright, it's Friday, casual Friday, and uh, this is not going to be an episode guide, right? this is going to be 18. Instead, uh, we're going to be doing something different today, we're going to be doing, uh, I only did one of these so far, and it's uh, basically uh, a workout, workout with me. The first one we did was with the punches, and this one will be focusing on Silom Tao. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, anyway, for those of you who actually like the uh, channel uh, or, or like the videos that I put up, uh, if you look at the upper right hand corner of the video, uh, I guess it'll be over here, you can click on the channel and it'll take you to a direct link of Facebook. And if you like us, click on the link and uh, tell us that you like the videos that we're doing. Um, anyway, let's get to the start of what we're, what we're focusing on and that's let's work out and if you have 10 minutes to spare, for the day, how exactly would you use that to work on Sillam Tao? Um, I mean, first of all, obviously Sillam Tao, open up your stance and blah, 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 okay? So you have your stance open. Now, one of the things I want you to, to focus on is there's different ways to actually practice Sillam Tao. There is a benefit to actually going through the whole motion, uh, doing the form slow, and going through the, in other words, if you have 10 minutes, from start beginning to end, there is a benefit to actually doing that. And you know, in the in the old days, uh, you could say that, uh, people would actually spend about 30, 45 minutes actually spending their time doing the form. But you know, in this day and age, with a uh, nonstop um, internet and fun all around you, you know, 30 minutes to concentrate on the form where people are standing still is, is a tough tough pill to swallow for most. In the reality of things, if you've got about 10 to 15 minutes um, and you know what you're doing when you're practicing Silom Tao, that's pretty much good enough uh, for the development of what you're looking at. Anyway, let's, let's see how I approach this. I'm actually going to bypass the first section. <laughs> that We could actually go into detail all about the first section, but I'm actually going to bypass that. We're going to jump from the second to the third section and I'm going to show you how sometimes when I'm looking at a particular form, I approach it differently uh, than what you normally would appreciate, would appreciate to, to, or would handle. So for example, let's say you're brand new and you're working on your form, okay? Regardless of how you do the form, if it varies from mine, that's fine. But sometimes it, you could just do, remember the first goal of the form is memorization. So you could do just a general walkthrough where I'm just, like, I'm just going through the motion. I'm not looking to put any power in it. I'm looking for where the position is, what comes after what. That's the end of the second section. And just taking it nice and slow. You know, if you're just learning the form, remember you're at the mem memorization stage. And you want to make sure that you're not pausing in between motions and thinking what what comes next, you know, what's the next motion. Okay? And I'm just doing a simple walkthrough guide. See? Nice and smooth, simple, and close, okay? Now, when practicing the form, that's really goal number one. Make sure you have it memorized and you can tweak it from there. So if you see yourself trying to go from, you're thinking what's the next move, what's the next move after this, and there's like pauses in between, then definitely you're still not there. That's stage one, memorize, okay? So if you, if, for example, if you're trying to get through it with the first 10 minutes, you can apply it simply as this, memorize, memorize, what comes after the other, and once you have it in your head, that's goal number one. Make sure you have it memorized, know where it is. Goal number two, sometimes instead of doing the whole form, like I said, you can take individual sections. Like for example, instead of doing, if you've got 10 minutes, instead of doing the entire three sections of Silum Tao, I would actually focus on, let's say, a section I'm struggling in. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say I'm taking the second, the sec second section, right? This is the second section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you can actually spend the first 
10 minutes of whatever you're practicing, just constantly repeating the second section. Because if you're struggling with a per particular move, then work on that second section over and over again until you per perfect it. Now, if you are, if you are in trouble, like, like let's say for example, a lot of people have a, have a hard time doing this motion. You know, I see people go this, raise their body up, chop it, or look really tight. Then there's not, no, no one says that you can't stay here and for 10 minutes just practice this motion. Open, close, left over right, open, close. See, I'm not even worried about the power involved. I just want positioning, okay? What's, what's positioning, see? Open, close, open, close. Open, close. And there's no problem in correcting yourself. Sometimes, sometimes people try to work through the form really fast. Open, close. But it takes a while to actually know if you're tired. So, if, for example, if I do the, this fun zone motion, I open, I give it a second, and a little tight here, relax it a bit. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? See, I adjusted my shoulder from that point. Okay? I'm looking for that feel. They're a little bit more, that's a little bit more relaxed. Okay? Then you also have to look at what's leading the motion. Remember, the elbow leads the motion. Remember how I was saying in the punch, you don't want to pop your, your elbows like this? Well, guess what? In fun zone, that's very common to actually pop your elbows where you go like this, pop. See? So for example, if my arm, if you see my arms go like this in this motion, pop. See? That's no different from me going like this. And you see a lot of people go like this, pop. But if you actually look at the motion and understand it, what am I doing? Point, see? Open, point, point, okay? So for example, taking this motion, elbow lead, point. Okay, now you see some people actually open all the way back like this. Now remember, from the beginning of the motion to the end of the motion, you wanna know what relax is. So how do I know positioning and things? So for example, if you don't know for, for yourself what tight is, you play around with it a little bit. For example, I already know Lanza at this position is the most relaxed. Just the, if I go like here, this is too relaxed. If I go here, it's too tight. I find that the, the nice balance in between where this is just the right amount to hold it, okay? Yeah, this right here is where I, I want to feel it. Then notice I go, I take it slowly. What does it mean? My elbows lead the motion and I point out. See that? Nice and smooth. Now, if you really look further into the detail of each individual motion, it notice it's not my arm that's actually saying, just open up. Look, look at my, my body. My body's here. Look at my chest. I'm not going to I, I don't want to exaggerate too much, but see how my, my body opens up and when it comes in, my body what closes in to lead the motion. This is me where my body's tight and it's just my hands. See? That's my hands. When I do it like this, my body actually opens up and naturally closes in. Notice how when I close in, it's also what? My body closes in and what? It's not my arms coming in, my elbow follows my body in and I close in naturally, okay? That's just the level of detail that you have to be aware of as far as knowing the motion. You can, you can copy motion where you're going, but that doesn't mean you're actually doing the actual technique correct. It really takes a while to actually develop that. Uh, so, for example, like I said, if you are struggling on an individual move, like here I'm, t I'm saying I'm working on funza, you can actually just practice that for 10 minutes and just go, all right, funza, open, adjust, come in, open, just come in, okay? Um, for, uh, we can look at something like third section. Third section, you have the bong sao. Bong sao, like, bong sao, tanza section is hard. You see a lot of people go like this, bong, tan, pao. Okay, what happened? You gotta make sure bong sao is what stays in the center. That means don't come out to go into the center. Notice my hand comes into the center already and then goes out, into out to do the bong sao. Okay, a lot of times you can just work on that individual motion because bong sao takes a while to actually develop one. I'm not happy with that one. Okay, positioning, boom. Positioning, a little bit better. Positioning, good. Positioning, see? Everything I'm doing, I'm doing for a particular reason. I'm not just saying, oh, let's just open up, do the form fast, and I'm all happy with it. You, re you really have to be meticulous as far as 
what to look for when you're practicing the individual form. Now, it's not uncommon that when you're practicing so much on looking at the hand techniques, the stance can wobble. Okay, it's not unusual that you're practicing here and then you're leaning forward or leaning back, so forth. So my recommendation is, if you are doing the form, after let's say you're doing the whole form, one, two, three, after each section, let's say at the end of the first section where I go uh, pop, boom, circle, you can pause for a second, check the stance and make sure it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Because the last thing you want to do is you're, you're working on your hand technique and then now you don't even have the stance. The whole point is to have the stance. All right, some towels, that's why you scan still because it really takes a long time to actually have that awareness of center. With the stance, you're looking at first what? Awareness, control, and maintenance of center. Then with the hand technique, you're actually looking for what? Can my stance actually be supported by the hand? And in the, in the beginning, you're just moving your hand. That doesn't necessarily mean your body's actually supporting it. There's a whole level of detail to do that, but the last thing in the very beginning, to keep it simple and easy, all I simply say is, are you leaning back? Or are you leaning forward? Have that level of awareness, okay? Um, let's look at other motions within Sun Ta. Um, what else? Well, there was something people struggle with. The, the what section is that? Oh, the uh, Tan Za, where you go Tan, Gan, Tan, Circle, and Pa. This, this one, a lot of people struggle to keep it square, you know. Notice throughout, when, let's say, let me do the third section here, okay? Notice, look at my shoulders, look where my shoulders are. One, two, three, turn. One, two, three, turn, okay? Now watch, watch if I do it incorrectly, okay? Watch my shoulders. See how you can actually see the shoulders moving? I'm probably exaggerating, but you actually see that a lot. Now, when, in the section I was talking about, where you go tan, gan, tan, hyun, people always do this. This is so, so common to do. So you actually have to be aware of awareness of what, what you do. When you circle hun, notice what? I'm aware of my center here. Just keep it square and then shoot, okay? Boom, other side. One, two, three, circle, square, okay? This, this. And you can play around with it for a while. Sometimes the body, don't be afraid to make mistakes when you're doing the form because that literally is your reference point for a lot of things that you do. Because how do you know right from wrong? You gotta play with it. It's like, well, I think this is right. But if you actually look, use a mirror and you look at yourself, wait, that's not square. There, okay, that's square. Eventually, you'll know what it feels like to lose the squareness of the technique or what tension is. But in the very beginning, with all these things that you're juggling from your stance to the position to the right tension to the location of everything, it's so much for the mind to juggle that, you know, from one thing to another, you, be, that, that it, you just can't uh, take that much information and process it, okay? So, overall, um, let's look at this one more time, okay? We have to practice the second section, okay? Watch. So-so, I -so. uh, felt a little off there. But notice, even as much as I practice it, you, you keep working on it and have a little word. I, I want to work it a little bit better. Feel a little bit better, I'm going to try working it again. Hmm, that didn't feel right. A little bit better. A tight there. And when I said tight, it's I, I, I over pinched it. I, I went in too much. So when I came around, one, here, this is a better location. Here I was forcing it in too much. So you, notice, look, I'm aware of what I'm doing, I'm correcting it. Okay, a little too high. See, these are all things I'm aware of. Open, that's okay. Hug, good. Lapsa, good. Tan, jet. Yeah, that's so so. Okay, just my stance good. There, a little bit better. Position a little bit, that's better. Okay, now I adjusted my hand here. I'm aware of that. Shoot out. My shoulders can be a pinch more relaxed. 
Hand jab, double punch. One, two. Ding. Hand dig right there. Uh, shoulder a little tense. And pull back. All right? See how I'm not rushing through it. It's, it's not how, how much I do it, uh, how often I do it. It's the time I spend practicing. Am I doing it right? Am I aware of what I'm doing? Do I know what right and wrong is? And that's exactly how I, I approach everything when I'm practicing it. You don't, you don't want to just be like, uh, uh. or you don't want to be like, well, I, I did some talk for 45 minutes. Some time, you try to do the best you can, but you have to be aware of what you're doing when you're doing that, okay? Not just uh, in the first section going slow. I'm slow, I'm slow. Look, look, this is like how everyone else is, I'm doing slow. Why are you doing that? You should, you should know why are you doing it, how to do it, and the detail behind everything when you're doing it. Otherwise, it's just, I can, you see people mimic copy motions, they're copy motions, but that doesn't mean you're doing Moon Chum, okay? So anyway, just to wrap it up, uh, hopefully this gives you a little idea of different ways to practice it. Um, if you have 10 to 15 minutes to spare, you can do the entire form. And what you're looking at is, if it's say 10 minutes, roughly the first eight minutes or nine minutes is the first section. And now you see the second and third section is the, the remainder amount. Um, if you're struggling with a section, work on an individual section over and over again, or the second section over and over again, or the third section, whichever one you're struggling with, work on that. If you're struggling on an individual motion, nothing, no one says that you can take one motion, one motion, repeat, one motion. See, I'm, I find a motion, something I want to work better, something that I'm struggling with, whatever the case would be, and I can repeat that motion until I get it, done, get it right. Um, knowing, knowing what is right, what is wrong. You know, I can do this, 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 what's right. You have to know that. If you don't know that, ask your teacher what right and wrong is. But in reality, if you know what to feel and you're honest with yourself as far as what tight is and what, what tight isn't, then you should be able to technically feel it out for yourself, okay? And use current technology. Um, uh, you can use, you videotape yourself. There's nothing wrong with saying videotape yourself and look at your form. Because a lot of times people are like, man, my form looks really good and I'm happy with it. Next thing they know, they videotape it and they're like, ugh, that's, that's really fugly, you know? That's not uncommon. Or, if you're doing a form, no one says, don't practice with the mirror. Use the mirror. There's a mirror right here across from the camera. I can actually look and see myself in my stance, see if I'm square, you know, in each motion. Am I, jump, am I bouncing myself? That's a common thing. People bounce their technique, rise it up and down like that. That's a no-no, okay? So use things to help yourself, or at the very least, do the form in front of your teacher or do it in front of your friend. And if he's honest, he'll be like, yeah, that looks a little tight, that looks a little weird, that looks a little wrong. Nothing wrong with that. The form is essential, it really is. Learning how to stand is essential. You know, without everything we have is based off the stance. Okay, the better your stance is, and notice the focus on Silent Tao is stationary because it does take a long time to actually develop it and be aware of why, why you're doing this, how to, connect your, how, how to connect the structures together. It takes a long time. And that's just for stationary control right now. Eventually, we'll go into movement with that. All right? So hopefully, uh, this gives you an idea how to work out and what to look for when you're working out. And, you know, overall, Hopefully the tips uh, make you better when you're doing uh, some time, okay?